Now we're going to revisit the same cost table that we looked at in video cost and production 4, 6, and 7. So this table here with total costs, fixed costs, variable costs, average total costs, and marginal costs, and we graphed them and did some analysis of what would a perfectly competitive firm do. And we're going to look at how things change if you're looking at a monopoly. And so over here we have one small firm and you can use it to model the one small firm's decision making process. And then what we did before was assumed that there are 100 small firms and we made this market supply curve by looking at the marginal cost curve of the one small firm right here and just picking it up and then placing it onto this graph multiplying the quantities by 100 if there are 100 small firms. There's one other change that you have to make though and that's at this very end down here and that is that the market supply curve cannot go below a price of $238.33 and we, we went through that previously. That's the shutdown price and so below this price of about 247 people will not produce four units each for 400 total in the market anymore they'll only produce three but they'll only produce three units down to that price of two hundred thirty eight dollars and thirty three cents and then everyone shuts down now like we've discussed before we could in this perfectly competitive market calculate approximate areas for things like consumer surplus right here above the price and below the demand curve right so we, we could do that let me uh, shade that here or we could uh, calculate an approximate area for producer surplus but it's only going to be approximate because we don't really have this straight line uh, assumption of supply or marginal costs like we had before but we could do approximations of all these things but instead of doing that I want to look and see continuing from our last lecture on monopolies what would happen if a monopolist came and bought all 100 firms and merged them into one mega firm well Actually, the analysis is slightly more complicated than what we're going to do, but in this framework, the easiest thing to do is to say, look, if there's a monopolist, then they're not going to have a supply curve anymore. They will have a marginal cost curve, just like we talked about in the last lecture. We don't call it su supply. We call it marginal cost. Second thing that's that's going to change there's no market price and so we need to figure out the marginal revenue curve and as we discussed in the previous lecture marginal revenue if demand is a straight line like this marginal revenue is just a line but it is exactly twice as steep and twice as steep means that if this demand curve hits the x-axis at a thousand marginal revenue being exactly twice as steep, going down twice as fast, is going to intersect at 500. So that's the second thing. We have a marginal revenue curve, and let me label that for us. Uh, marginal revenue. Now, the third thing that we have to look at is, wait a minute, wait a minute. This little leg here of the marginal what well the supply curve what this used to be a supply curve here now is marginal cost goes from this marginal cost in the table that saying that businesses would be willing to produce four units each if the price was 247 or larger but below 247 at a price of 245 240 for example businesses would only be willing to produce three units because price is still bigger than the marginal cost of three units but that's only going to be true down to that minimum average variable cost over here of two hundred and thirty eight dollars and thirty three cents
that makes sense for a supply curve, but not for marginal cost, because a monopolist wants to see exactly where does marginal revenue equal marginal cost. And so what we do instead is we want to draw down where marginal cost is. Monopolist doesn't have this. They do have the same shutdown rule, but that's not the purpose of comparing marginal revenue and marginal cost. The price the monopolist char charges is going to be much larger. And so we want to pick up these marginal costs here and put those on the graph. So the third unit, the marginal cost is 130. And so we want to adjust our graph here so that the monopolist can see that that marginal cost for the third unit for the 100 little firms that they're going to make is 130. And so let me make that into another color that's a little easier to see. Green here. Okay. So the green represents the actual marginal cost from the table, whereas the brown represents the shutdown rule point, which is irrelevant for the monopolist. Now it's not going to make a huge amount of difference in this case. Let's zoom in a little bit to see a little more clearly what's going to happen here with this monopolist. So the monopolist wants to see where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And at this point, the way I teach my students is, at this point everything is kind of approximate. You can't be too exact. And so if we just try to do our best guess of where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, it looks like it would be just under 400 units. So the rule is the monopolist looks to see where marginal revenue equals marginal cost and they look down at the quantity axis in order to figure out what quantity they should stop producing. And for this monopolist marginal revenue equals marginal cost it, let's call it 390 units. You know, you may say 395, someone else may say 380, that's okay. Let's just call that 390 units. Then the next step for the monopolist is to say, okay, if I'm going to be producing 390 units, I'm a monopolist. I choose the price. What's the best price for me to choose? You look up at the demand curve. That tells you the highest price that you can charge. So you start at that quantity of 390 and then you go up to the demand curve and you try to look what is the price where I could just barely sell that 390th unit. And it looks like that price, the way I've drawn it, might be about 620. Now actually the price, if you put in 390 into that demand function there, which is 1000 minus Q, you'd get 610. But it's okay. I mean, we're, we're being somewhat approximate with large numbers here. So let's call that, well, I'll call it 610 since I know it's 610. But the point is not guessing numbers on an, a, a graph here. The point is knowing why you're doing what you're doing. So let's see. The monopolist price would be 610. Now make sure that price is higher than what the equilibrium price would have been, around 390 or 400 if it was still a perfectly competitive business. And the market quantity has to be less than this 600, which would be the supply equals demand quantity. Now once, you have to be careful, once you see that the market quant, sorry, monopolist quantity will be 390, and the price is 610. Don't let that marginal revenue curve distract you. Don't let it trip you up. And so I'm going to fade it out to where we can barely see it here. I'm going to make it very transparent because it's not used for anything else. It's only used to determine that quantity that you should stop producing at. And so now we can just barely see it so it doesn't distract us. And now you can see a little more clearly if you wanted to calculate consumer surplus you can see right where that would be, right there. And let me make that a little 
less transparent. And then you could estimate producer surplus. We can't really see exactly what it is on this graph, but we could sort of estimate that, uh, okay, producer surplus is above, you know, marginal cost and below the price, you know, maybe perhaps something like that green area. It's approximate. And then the dead weight loss is going to be this amount over here. And we can actually calculate that dead weight loss. Again, it's going to be an estimate, but it would be somewhat close in a market if you were to do this. And let's figure out what that would be. That triangle, the base or the left edge here, would be from 610 down to around 250. And so that would be about, so the height looks to be between 600 and 390, that's about 210, half times base times height, 37,800.